I'm going to briefly show you how I made the diagonal brick. On this brick, I decided to start with a side sketch instead of a bottom sketch. So this is a side sketch right here. You can tell because it says front here. If I looked at the top, um, it would appear like a line. So I'm looking at the front here. I did six by 10 because that's the units of the uh, two by two brick that you made before. And what I did is I made a diagonal line right here. I was able to snap at the top, but I couldn't snap at the bottom. So what I did is I chose an angle of 45 degrees and then that let me lock in this point. After that, I used the trim tool right here. The trim tool lets you cut geometry. So I cut these pieces out with the trim tool. So cut one, then the other. Now I have the nice uh, shape right here. Then I extruded this next. I extruded it 10 units. And this is what you should get. And again, I can rotate nicely with the uh, shift middle mouse. All right, from here, the rest should be intuitive, but I'll just go through it anyways. Built a sketch on the top, put the circles on. I just put the two circles in with the change in the grid spacing, extruded them. Then I shelled the bottom right there, just like you did before. That creates that nice interior. And then I just filleted the uh, top two circles and that was it. All right, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to recreate this. We're gonna quickly make the flat four by eight piece. This would be like the base of your vehicle. And to do that, I started with a top, a regular top sketch. And the units on this, basically all these Lego, in these Lego units, each piece is five units. So the piece we were making before were uh, the two by two piece was 10 by 10. So basically just think, I want this to be four uh, circles tall. And so each of those is five. So you do five times four is gonna be 20. I want eight circles across. So that'll be eight times five is 40. So this is a 20 by 40 uh, rectangle you're looking at. Then you're gonna extrude it. Now how much should you extrude it is a good question. Uh, looks like I already did that. So if I look sideways, my stupid grid disappeared but you want to extrude it two units tall because remember you're going to shell it out one unit and if it was only one unit tall your shell wouldn't work so the next thing you do is build your uh, extruded piece at the top that is one unit tall just like before you can see that's a unit so when we shell it out we'll have one unit of empty space one unit of plastic and then that little piece at the top and then of course you got to duplicate that now, a little tip on duplication, you're gonna go rectangular pattern. I did not show you this before. You do need to go features. Now, the distance type, there's extent, which you list the total distance. You can also use spacing, and I just gave away what the spacing is. The spacing is five units. So if you switch to spacing, you can just pick five units right here and five units right here. You do need to, of course, pick directions. So I go boom, boom. There's your directions. I don't know why it's not showing up, but anyways, I don't want to do this. I already did it. So I recommend cancel. I recommend using the spacing on this particular application. So that'll put all these up here. Uh, it's tempting to fill it this first, but the problem is if you fill it this, it will fill it all the ones you copied. But when you go to shell, the bottom underneath is gonna be filleted as well. Um, I'm not too concerned on this project about the fillets. So then I just go shell and once you shell it out, basically done right there. That's your entire uh, piece. And of course you can change dimensions on this. You know, you can make a you know, four by 12 or six by something. You don't need to make it four by eight, but this should be a pretty fast piece to make. I'm gonna build the axle next. And if you try to do Google image search for an axle, they all look really hard to see what's actually going on. But basically it's a plus sign that's extruded. There is some kind of rounding right here that I'm not gonna to worry too much about making that perfect. I added a little fillet over here, but basically we're gonna extrude a plus sign. So let's think about the important dimensions on here. This needs to fit in a three uh, 
a diameter three circle that was in our uh, one by two brick with the hole. So it needs to fit into that hole. That's diameter three. I spaced the grid out to two units or two grids per two subdivisions per millimeter. And that let me do a nice 1.5 radius, making the diameter three total. All right, so what I do next, they would not let me snap. I could not snap to where the circle intersects the grid. The only place I could snap to was where the grid intersected the grid up here. So I did a bunch of lines that actually left the circle and I did this so that I could get it all perfectly lined up. And what I did next, I used the trim tool that let me cut out all the extra stuff. So what I trimmed was I first started with those arcs of the circle, trim those guys, and then I have all those little extra pieces of lines. Take all those, carefully take those out. They're pretty small. You may have to zoom in. Uh, oops, went too far there. Uh, you may have to zoom in so that you actually trim that piece and not that piece or that piece. So feel free to zoom in, zoom out. So trim that. Then of course, what do you do next? Obviously you extrude this. I wanted to make it, I'm planning for my vehicle to be three or four of those Lego circles wide, which means my axle needs to be longer. So I'm gonna make my axle six of those Lego units or six of those circle units, which would be six times five is 30 total Lego units long. So I extruded it 30 units right there. And then the only thing I did after that is I just took the fillet. And when I filleted, you could select all the edges right there. It's quite a few, is that 12 edges we're looking at? You could do that, or you could just grab the entire face. And I filleted the entire face, filleted the other side as well. And that's it right there. That's your axle. Feel free to make one, especially if you want to make wide tires, you might need to make it instead of 30, you might need to make it 40. Uh, but here's our axle. Uh, most of them are black or gray. So I'm going to go ahead and add that physical material. I don't think I'm going to use shiny. I'm planning to use this laminate right here. Unfortunately, I don't really see a laminate black material. So we'll just add this plastic on. All right, organization is super important. You wanna make sure that all your pieces are lined up directly inside here. Here's my screw up from before. Unfortunately, you don't wanna have too many of those things going on. So when I make my next piece, I'm gonna go assemble, new component. I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose here. Uh, we'll call it component 10, sure. All right, what did I do wrong? Component 10 lives inside of axle right here. That's not what you want. So I undid it, it doesn't exist anymore. You gotta select up here on your whole assembly. It's gonna start looking crazy because we got a whole bunch of different size pieces hanging out in here. You're gonna go new component and I'm gonna make a wheel next. All right, now our wheel looks, it's right on the same level as all the other components. That's super important as this file gets bigger and bigger. As you follow that uh, tire tutorial, I decided to do the, the kind of standard tread on this Lego tire right here. You have to choose from object. You got to select your object. You don't want an offset or else your tread will be floating in space. The important part is you do need to go to join. If you go to join, it'll actually add it into the tire. Sometimes it's selected as new body or new component, in which case it'll make a bunch of new bodies and we're about to duplicate this in a radial pattern. So you don't want to have a whole ton of these hanging around. All right, so once we have that, we're going to go duplicate in a circular pattern. And we're going to go features. Now it's on the body, so you can't select it in the visual area, but you can select it down in the timeline. So we got features selected, uh, axis, you want to select that. I'll just hit that circle right there. And now how many do you want? I want a lot. So I'll go straight to 20 and you can kind of rotate your view and it's a little tricky to see right here, how they're going to line up. 
I don't want too much overlap, but I also don't want a gap right here. So it looks like 19 will be pretty good. Unfortunately, each other one's gonna have a little overlap and then these will match perfectly, but that's good enough for this. So there you go, that's your Lego tire. And obviously we're gonna need to do some work on our rim. We need to cut a hole in it so the axis fits through. We'll do that next. As you follow that uh, tire tutorial, I decided to do the, the kind of standard tread on this Lego tire right here. You have to choose from object. You gotta select your object. You don't want an offset or else your tread will be floating in space. The important part is you do need to go to join if you go to join, it'll actually add it into the tire. Sometimes it's selected as new body or new component, in which case it'll make a bunch of new bodies and we're about to duplicate this in a radial pattern. So you don't wanna have a whole ton of these hanging around. All right, so once we have that, we're gonna go duplicate in a circular pattern. And we're gonna go features. Now it's on the body, so you can't select it in the visual area, but you can select it down in the timeline. So we got features selected, uh, axis, you want to select that. I'll just hit that circle right there. And now how many do you want? I want a lot. So I'll go straight to 20. And you can kind of rotate your view. And it's a little tricky to see right here how they're going to line up. I don't want too much overlap, but I also don't want a gap right here. So it looks like 19 will be pretty good. Unfortunately, each other one's gonna have a little overlap and then these will match perfectly, but that's good enough for this. So there you go, that's your Lego tire. And obviously we're gonna need to do some work on our rim. We need to cut a hole in it so the axis fits through. We'll do that next. The next thing we're gonna do is cut a axle sized hole in our rim so we can push the axle through. So first thing I did is I moved, well I made the, where is it? I made the axle visible because I, I hit it before so I could build the tire up and make it look cool. So now I showed the axle again. I also pushed it all the way through because I didn't want to push it partially through so that these fillets kind of remained inside here. So I shoved it all the way through. And now what we're gonna do is use the combine tool. So it's right up here, combine. You do need to hit capture position uh, because if you hit continue, it'll push the axle back to the original. So I'm gonna go capture position. All right, target body is the one you're gonna modify. And I wanna modify the rim. So now I have the target body selected. The tool, that means the, to the body you're gonna use to cut and we're gonna go and select the axle right there. It shows up in red now. Uh, it's already selected on cut, so that's fine. Now it's super important, you gotta keep the tool. If you don't keep the tool, your axle's gonna get thrown away. So by default, keep the tool is not checked. So if you, if you go ahead and hit okay, your axle's gonna disappear. Probably not what you want, so I'm gonna keep the tool, hit okay. Now I'm gonna hide that axle again. So I don't need it at the moment. And now you can see right there that I have the uh, hole cut out so I can push the axle through the tire. You can of course fill it these edges, fill it whatever you want, but because we did cut it perfectly, it will fit perfectly back in. I've started my Lego car here. One important thing that you need to do I have my bricks up here. These are all my bricks from before. You need to start a completely new component. You don't wanna build inside this component. I've also hidden everything in my set of bricks here. And down in my Lego car, these are all copies of what's in here. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I laid out some of these parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that brick out of here. And what I'm going to do is now put the ones with the holes at the bottom and I'll put the axles through later. So I need the brick with the hole. Really important you label things here. So I'm going to copy 
Now you need to click on the Lego car down here and you also need to go paste new. So I've changed my grid setting a little bit. I've made it to five millimeters or five Lego units, which is really nice. You can see in the horizontal layout, that means when I move over, it'll move over one uh, full circle, basically. There is a problem in the vertical because all these bricks are six units tall. So you're about to see what's gonna happen here. I'll make this visible. M for move. If I drag it down, if I leave it here, you see that it's not down far enough. I also have the thin one underneath, that's two millimeters as well. If I drag it down a second time, that's too far, but because I have the snap on, I can't actually get it where I want it to be. That's okay. So I know I need less than negative 10, so I'll try negative nine, almost negative eight, boom. It snaps, or it doesn't snap in, but it goes right in where it should. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now I wanna build, put one on the second side. So I'm gonna go M for move. Now I'm gonna create a copy here. Here's where the grid will work out really nicely. When I drag it, one, two, three over, it's 15 millimeters, it puts it exactly lined up where I want it, right there. Now I wanna move both of these, so I'll click, or make a copy of both of these in the front. So I'm gonna hit M for move, create copy, and then I get to drag it forward, and again, because I've snapped to the correct units, it will automatically Wherever I drag it, it'll go exactly lined up. Now I do realize I should have put uh, the in-between circles down here. That's okay, it's a little late for that. Um, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But this is how you can lay this out pretty, pretty well. Just remember the vertical units are six millimeters, the horizontal units are five. So you're gonna have to actually manually type in the vertical uh, amount you wanna move. This flat part is two millimeters or two units tall, so just keep that in mind. The regular pieces are six units tall, meaning they're three times as tall as one of these short pieces. I'm gonna move the axle and the wheels, and I'm gonna create a copy so that I can get the front ones here. You should snap in the grid right up to where you want it to go. Looks good there, hit OK. And that should do it for my wheels of my truck here, or car, or whatever the heck this is. All right, that's all you need to do for project one is build uh, an assembly like this. And again, I put all those pieces in the Lego car and everything up here, the all bricks are all invisible. I didn't want them to show. You can also hide them right up here. It's another way to do it. And if I want, I could hide other pieces so I can see things better. You probably want to make a car look fancy, so we'll talk about that. So you can go background, I'm going to go environment, and you can choose whatever environment you want. You can do it on a crossroads. And now, if you want to move your environment around, this is a different story, things get a little more tricky, just to warn you. You, if you move your environment up, things will get very weird. You'll start covering up your actual model, so I strongly suggest you don't do that. Could rotate it if you really want to. All right, let's talk about the settings. Brightness is very important. Depending on how bright it is, things might look uh, very difficult to see. And we'll just go with this right here. You can change the aspect ratio if you'd like to. And when you're ready, you're gonna hit render. You need to make sure that you go local render. If you're on a slower machine, you probably wanna go standard. I'm gonna get crazy and go to uh, final, which is 75. And you just hit render. It'll take a little while. I've already rendered some of these, right? Oops, that's not what I wanted. I already rendered some of these, and I want you to see what I messed up, or what makes this look bad, is the light is way too bright, so you can't really see the detail right there. So you wanna make sure that your lighting is good. The tire, the black tires look fine, but yeah, I just didn't like that lighting overall. This one's almost done. I do have a pretty good video card, so your rendering may take a little longer than this one's gonna take. 
I guess while we're waiting, we can see the first one. This one has the same brightness, so you can't really see some of the detail on here. All right, here we go. So now we'll see the results of this one. I actually think the lighting in here is pretty good because the details are a little more easy to see on this Lego car. All right, when you want to download, just hit download and you go ahead, save it. I'll just put it in downloads, that's fine. And then you can open up on your computer and check it out.